I'm delighted to be speaking with Tanya de Jong uh, again in the studio, and we're looking further at the topic of creativity. Tanya, thank you very much for coming back. A pleasure. Now, today, I think we're going to talk all about your grandmother. <laughs> so, come on, tell us about your grandmother. Well, my grandmother um, was born in Poland and came to Vienna as a promising painter in the early 1920s. She met my grandfather, who is a, a promising sculptor, also from Poland, but had, had come to Vienna to study with the leading um, teaching artist of that generation, a man called Anton Hanak. Right. And he was a contemporary of Egon Schiller and Gustav right. Klimt. Some names uh, I recognise. Yes. So there they were studying this hotbed of creativity in Vienna. And they used to frequent the local museum. And so one Sunday they went off to the museum. It was a rainy Sunday. My grandmother had her big umbrella with her. And as she was walking along to the museum, she said to my grandfather, oh, you know, it's, it's crazy that we have such a big umbrella. You know, imagine if I could have a little umbrella that fitted in my handbag. And he said, oh, how interesting. And she said, you know, I'm going to think about this. Her name's Slava Duldig. Right. And um, so she said, please don't tell anyone. Because, you know, it's a secret. And he said, oh, I'll keep it a secret. And so off she went to all the lampshade shops around Vienna. And she went to a lot of different shops so that they wouldn't be on to her grand plan. And she collected spokes from lampshades. And um, eventually, she was able to patent the first foldable umbrella. Your in grandmother patented <laughs> the first folding umbrella. In right. 1929. Right. And so what happened actually was that she successfully manufactured that for 10 years until the Nazis walked into Vienna in 1939. And um, my grandparents were forced to flee Vienna just in the nick of time to Switzerland. And, and then in Switzerland, she was contacted by the German authorities. And they were, Mrs. Dordig, we believe you've got the patent of the first foldable umbrella and uh, we would like to buy it from you. And being uprooted from a home, not knowing what was going to happen next, she had no choice but to sell the patent. Of course, never saw really. another cent. <clears throat> well, at the time it was, it was significant, but you know, yeah. never saw another cent from you know, an invention that has serviced millions and millions of people around it's the world for, for decades. But I think you know, what that shows us about creativity mm. is the importance of having an inquiring mind. Yes. Um, and so if we can nurture inquiring minds around us in our businesses and, and, and in ourselves, um, it's amazing. We should ask these questions, you know, what could exist that is not existing now? Mm. What could be happening that is not happening now? And I guess the process, yeah. I mean, it's fascinating to hear about your grandmother, and I guess yeah. we haven't necessarily all got a, a folding umbrella inside <laughs> this, but what you're suggesting, I think, is just by allowing the thought process to happen, again, presumably regardless of whether it's directly related to your business or not, mm. will start to open up a, a whole kind of channel of creativity. That's right, new ideas and, and mm. potentially inventions. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So for a bit, again, moving mm. it, looking at this from a, how we can use some of this practically mm. in a business, presumably if we've got <clears throat> any sort of particular challenge in our business, um, we can approach it or should approach it in much the same way as your grandmother did, Absolutely. which is just to just to be free with our imagination. That's Don't worry right. about how you're going to do it. Yeah. Just think about what the end result is. What is the possibilities mm. here? You know, and, and what could exist? And is it mm. possible that we could change this to something completely how different? How easy do you think this is when you're working on your own? I mean, how, is it possible or do you really... She was working on her own. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's absolutely possible. I think it's good to have a sounding board, though. Yeah. Like she had my granddad. Yes, but, but that was a secret between the two of them. So I think it's absolutely possible, but you just have to keep going through that ideation process. I mean, the design took her, it, it took probably a year for her to find, to create the final, you know, patentable yeah, invention. Sure. So you're not necessarily going to find the answer straight away and you have to be prepared to just keep iterating, you know, is it reiterating, yeah. you know, your idea until you find what you think is the, the really the good right solution. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> solution. Well, thank you so much. First time we've talked about grandmothers, I think, on this <laughs> program. So thank you for joining us. Now, if we want to find out more about you, I know you have a, a plethora of websites, but the main one we should go to creativeuniverse.com.au. Okay, yeah. Tanya, thank you very much for joining Pleasure us. Pleasure of it. Thank you.